so my second area was where I was starting to really feel comfortable speaking German. And we were in church. Um, I was understanding about, you know, the normal amount of stuff I understand and getting what was going on. And then we had a member who was getting married um, to a, a sister who was out of North Germany, out of an area where they spoke Hochdeutsch. It was like kind of their dialect, so to say, where it was more common. And um, my second area, I should clarify, was in Upper Austria. Most people spoke pretty much only dialect. <laughs> um, and so this um, lady from North Germany gets up and she starts bearing her testimony, just kind of introducing herself to the ward. And I understood everything and I was just like, what happened? <laughs> and that is when I first began to realize that there was a major difference between um, Hochdeutsch, what I had been studying and learning, and the different dialects, which I found out the only way I could differentiate, differentiate, <laughs> um, tell the difference between um, for that first little while was how much I actually was able to understand the person. Um, it was a little bit more fun when I got into my um, last couple of areas, into Bayern and into Baden-Württemberg, because my German got to a point where it was good enough that I started to be able to hear and understand the differences between the different dialects. Um, um, the two I had the most experience with was Bayerisch and Zwiebisch. Um, my personal favorite is Zwiebisch. It just kind of has this... It's a little bit... Um, the intonation is a little bit more similar to Switzerdeutsch, just because they're sitting a little bit closer to the Swiss border. Um, they just kind of have this rise and fall, the Efli and die Fehle, that just kind of runs throughout their dialect. Um, you'll run into different words um, that are used by the different dialects, um, like in Schwäbisch, like to talk, to have a conversation with someone, mit jemand zu sprechen, um, they'd say, mit jemand zu schwätzen, ein bisschen schwätzen, switching over to Bayerisch. Um, my impression of Bayerisch was they seemed to speak a little bit deeper in the throat. Um, I don't know, it's difficult for me to explain the differences in the dialect just because I never really tried to speak the dialect all the time because I was supposed to speak Hochdeutsch and my German was bad enough that I didn't need to try to go into the um, different dialects. But Jürol Bayerisch was kind of like a typical phrase. I speak Bayerisch. Jürol Bayerisch. They, I don't know, they seem to cut off a lot of the, um, they shorten words, they conjugate their verbs a little bit less. And your R's, in German there's like three different R's you can use. There's, you roll the R in the front of your mouth, you roll the R in the back of your mouth, and then there's like this really deep just R that you use. Um, in Bayern, they use only the, they roll all of their R's in the front. So, and that's so kind of, that's fun. But, like I said, I I don't know why. I just really like Swabish. It just kind of had this fun sound to it. So, um, Swabish is primarily spoken in Baden-Württemberg, in Schwabenland as it's called. Um, I think I'm mixing those two up. My geography is not the best, I'll admit that. <laughs> um, but when you get closer to the west end of the mission, you'll hear more Swabish. Um, Bayern is spoken, or Bayerisch is spoken throughout Bayern. So a little bit more the central part of Germany, or not central part of Germany, but the central part of our mission, uh, my mission. Yeah. <laughs> of my mission. Um, so Munich and then a little bit um, heading west and then more into south and then into Austria. Um, it's hard to say exactly where the dialects kind of pick up and end and then switch to the next dialect because in certain areas each city can have its own dialect. Um, it was a lot like that in my second area in Hog. <clears throat> um, we're much more in the rural areas of Upper Austria, there was a different dialect for every single city. Um, and then all of the large um, cities tend to have kind of their own variation of the dialect, like I was saying. Vienna had Wienerisch, um, Salzburg you have Salzburgerisch, and then Munich, Munich you have Bayerisch, 
And then you go in more west, Stuttgart, into that area is where you hear more of the um, Swabish. Or the um, Swabish and English, English and Swedish. Yeah. And then in Switzerland is where you get the Swiss German, the Switzerdeutsch, which, like I said earlier, is considered by most German speaking people a completely different language. <laughs> So, learning German. <laughs> learning German is a very difficult because the order of the words are switched around. I think there's an advantage to German because a lot of words are similar. You can kind of guess what the words are going to be going from English to German, but at the same time, the word, like the order of the words are like completely switched around and like a lot of the, um, I don't know, words like on or at or in or stuff are like different in German. So you're going to sound really funny <laughs> translating directly from English to German. Uh, but a lot of Germans actually, especially in the West, um, they grew up learning English in schools. In the East, they grew up learning Russian in schools. So they won't understand um, very much English at all in the, in the East. But in the West, um, people will kind of know what you're talking about, even if you translate directly. Um, but I, I think, like, just don't get discouraged to learning the language and just keep trying to imitate what you hear. At one point in my mission, I we went around and we um, went to members' houses and we had, like, words written down and we were trying to, you know, have them pronounce it exactly how they would, like, do it slow, pronounce it slowly and then pronounce it quickly and then put it in a sentence. And, and we go home and watch these little videos and try to like imitate it exactly. And that really helped um, learn the language. Um, let's see, also like trying to speak it every day and trying to only speak it when we're outside um, and maybe doing like English inside and, and German outside or like English only at lunchtime and then German every other time or something like that like really helped to like try to focus on learning the language. I think there's a balance though, because you have to communicate with your companion definitely like, and make sure they know that you care about them because there can be some like, I don't know, language barriers even within a companionship if, if you don't communicate. But I think it's really important to speak German a lot. And um, I don't know, it's even just like hard to pronounce the specific sounds like the number five is fünf. And one time we were talking to this old lady who couldn't really see very well. She was pretty much blind and she couldn't really hear very well. <laughs> and so we went to visit her and she was like asking about us. And my companion has five siblings, right? So she was like, how many siblings do you have? And my companion was like, foomph. And she goes, what? And then she goes, foomph. And she goes, what? And we were like, foomph. She goes, huh? And we're like, fun. F How do you say that? <laughs> fun. 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 <laughs> it was super hard to pronounce. So, anyways, that sound, ooh, with like an E on the inside and like an ooh on the outside. Fun. It's really hard to pronounce. And a lot of words are like that, but you just, I don't know, like really try to imitate them every day. Just try to get that sound right. So, um, yeah, so that's one of the sounds that's hard. Another sound is the rolling R in the back of the throat. I never got that. It's like an R. I don't know. I can't even imitate it. But this rolling R in the back of your throat, that's pretty hard to do. And I don't know. I just found that like Germans really want to help you with specifics if you ask them. So if you say, can, can, I'm from America. Can you help me pronounce this word correctly? They're going to they're gonna work with you, you know? So that's really helpful of them. And... Uh, yeah, I just, uh, reading to little kids or having little kids read to you is super helpful as well. If you have a little kid, sit them down and have them read something to you. They, they pronounce every single letter. And so it's super helpful. That was a cool thing for me to do to learn, um, the language. So those are little tips, helpful things. German as a language, um, it's a pretty, uh, logical language, structured language. Um, you don't the rules tend not to be broken like in English you know we have many exceptions um, but for the most part the rules you know stay the same um, it's it's cool I think it's cool in that words are built of smaller words and so to understand the meaning of a word or to even come up with a word um, is usually fairly simple once you get a, a good grasp of the language you can look at a you know a long word and and understand what it's talking about 
you know, generally, because you can take your smaller vocabularies and infer what the meaning is. Um, and I've even had cases where I just, I want to say a word, but I don't know what it is. So you kind of just take different words and put them together and you can usually get pretty close to the word you're looking for or, if, you know, or actually get the word. So that's something cool about the language. Um, you just gotta, you know, I think like any language, you just gotta dive in and start speaking with the people. Um, in the MTC, you'll learn, you know, a good bit, but in the field, you'll learn a whole lot more if you just go out and talk to people. Um, if you ask lots of questions, if you, um, you know, just, just try and talk with the members. Well, we do have a couple, I don't, I don't know if they're considered extra vowels, but um, the O and the U um, have they call what they call umlauts, which is two dots above. I don't know if you've seen um, those, um, but they're pronounced a little, little differently. Um, those vowels, and then um, a Z is it's one of the harder letters. It's pronounced a T S. I guess the best way to um, describe it, sort of its sound. Um, and then one of the funny ones is V and uh, W. Are kind of swapped. So a V makes an F sound in, um, in English um, and then a W makes a V sound. Um, so that's you know one of those weird changes that you kind of have to remember. So definitely hearing the language helps a ton um, and if you can hear it and read along with it or have it in English or in German that's awesome because you can compare and learn words but honestly what I missed so much on my mission was reading children's books because you learn real German that's not gospel German, but just like German that's helpful. Um, but you learn it in an easy, simplified way. Um, and so I wish that before my mission I had taken more advantage of those things. Because um, you, you can't read children's books on your mission, sadly. Listen to it just so you have an idea of how it sounds. And then like in the MTC, just don't be afraid to speak it. Even when you're in the field and you're surrounded by these people that have you have no idea what they're saying. And all you can say is, Ich bin die Sister Gilmore. Or... Ich komme aus America, or whatever, as long as it's just like a simple phrase, just like show them that you can speak it, because then they'll just ramble off in German, and if you don't understand it, you just say, no, Bitte, like, can you repeat yourself, please, one more time? They love it when you speak their language, even if it's just something so simple, they love to see that you're trying. Um, so just try. That, that goes for every mission. I think that uh, any country or every native that sees someone trying to learn their language is really appreciative um, and sympathetic to that person and even if they start speaking to you in English they're just really grateful that you are trying to learn their language um, and then if they speak to you in English just keep going at them in German like just show them that you want to speak the language you want to learn it read your scriptures in German and in English um, I definitely I started at the beginning of my mission reading the Book of Mormon in German with my English next to mine if there's words that you don't understand, ask people. Ask people all the time. It's such a good conversation starter when you like see a word like on a advertisement or, or like something on the train that you don't understand. Just be like, excuse me, like what does that mean? And then they'll explain it to you. If you want to learn like the, the accent, I guess, of the of the the natives, ask people to repeat words to you and then you repeat them back to you and then they'll tell you how you're saying it wrong so that you're you're really learning how to speak the language like a native. Um and try as often as possible to have normal conversations with people as well, not just gospel. Because you come away from your mission realizing that you learned a lot of gospel-related German, but you don't have German that's going to keep you afloat for very long as a normal person. So if you want to use your language, you need to learn how to speak like a normal native. Speak some slang. It's fun. <laughs> I am a super big fan of German. I love the German language. I took a couple years of it in high school. I remember the young men in my ward who were older than me, they, they had studied some German, German la I have a German last name, German family, and so, you know, so I was just like uh, grown up in the idea of German is cool. And uh, then getting there and living in the language, that was, that was an incredible experience. German is, I feel, a very eloquent language in its nature. Uh, German as it is, is very capable of expressing a lot of things um, down to the very subtle aspects of like, um, which you know, grammatical form did you use in that sentence, you know, between um, how you addressed the person or how did you conjugate the verb? You know, there's just a lot of ways that will determine exactly what are you trying to say right now. 
and uh, what do you want to convey with that message too? You know, there's just there's a lot of um, ways to make sure your point is getting across. And for me, that did a lot of helping me realize what is my point, because I know uh, just you know you grow up with you grow up with your native language and you uh, speak the dialects where you grow up, and a lot of it just kind of gets slurred and blurred together. You don't necessarily think a lot about what you say, like. Yeah, in moments for sure, you definitely do, but um, it's so ingrained into you that you don't really grasp sometimes. And of course, in each of these situations, the opposite is also true, exceptions everywhere. But there was something about learning German for me that helped me really delve into communication and how, uh, you know, how am I going to help this person? You know, what words can I find to express this? Or what words um, do they need to hear right now? How would they react to what I'm saying? But in such a deep way because of how German is structured. It's very exact. Um, you could have the voc vocabulary perfect. You could have the accent perfect. And if the form of the sentence isn't exactly right, they'll look at you and think, eh, you're not from here, are you? Or if you have like perfect grammatical form, and all that stuff, but your accent's off. So it's like, are you from Holland? Are you are you from the Netherlands? And uh, if you if they ask you that, they don't like your accent. <laughs> if you if they if they say you either have uh, an uh, an ac a Dutch accent, you know, from the Netherlands, or an American accent, they don't really like your accent. Uh, but within the countries themselves, there are so many different. Uh, variations on the accent, on the dialects, because, you know, going back again to their history, it's a very long-standing people. You know, you could go back a couple thousand years and find where they actually came from. But if you look back at that, each little tribe, each province, each territory, they were their own kingdoms, and they had their own languages. And if you traveled between them, if you were capable in the, in the art, you could definitely learn to communicate with each other, but they were very different languages. And that still exists today to a point. Uh, one of the very many very bad things that happened during World War II with uh, Hitler's regime was the fact that he tried to do away with all these differences in language. And that in turn, you know, from it helps take away the cultural identity makes them one, makes them conform, you know, under his thumb. And so it's not necessarily as thick as it has been in centuries past, but there's still still some gigantic differences in the dialects. And that was something that was honestly so much fun, so much fun about going between all the different places where you ended up living at. Because where I, my first area was uh, Zangpoten in Austria, and that was kind of a Zankt Pötnerisch, Wienerisch sort of a thing. And uh, after that, I got transferred to the complete other side of the mission to Baden-Württemberg, to a town called Tübingen. And there they spoke Schwäbisch. And it was completely different. And it was kind of funny because I was still pretty early. You know, I, I was getting a grasp on the language, but, you know, still learning a lot of it. And I remember getting transferred from Austria to Germany and thinking, wow, I can understand the people here. <laughs> like, I could understand the Austrians, but it took a lot of work, especially being someone who was fresh into the field. And uh, then getting transferred over to Germany, it seemed so much clearer. <laughs> and uh, I definitely loved each of the accents, but there are definitely some interesting quirks about them. After that, I went to Bavaria, served in Ingolstadt. Again, totally different accent, totally different dialect. And then after that, I got transferred back to Austria, to Innsbruck. And again, different region, different dialect, different accent. Everyone understands the high German. Very few of them actually speak it. Like, you know... I don't, well, yeah, natively, I mean, I didn't want to say natively, but uh, they have their cultural identity within their dialect, and they have to learn high German, too. 
uh, a lot of people that I ran into actually, they view it this way, you know, as the natives themselves. Hi, German's important. You need to learn it so you can communicate with other people. Your dialect is important, your native dialect, because that tells a lot about who you are, where you're from, your family, so on and so forth. Just your personality. Like it's A lot of it's embedded within how you speak. And then they also go on to say, but if all you can speak is your dialect, then please just don't talk to me. <laughs> you know, uh, you have to be able to live in the world as it is. And if you can't speak high German, uh, when you have to, then you're not really uh, thriving in the modern environment. Yeah, again, going back to there's a way we do things. Efficiency. We're going to make this work. Yeah.